So today, as I mentioned once before, this is module two. Uh, we'll focus on testing methodologies. Uh, it, well, w this is broken out to three different sections. The first one is testing techniques. Next is testing levels. And then finally, testing types. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll first talk about testing techniques. In this section, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll focus on manual testing, uh, automated testing, talk about black box and white box uh, testing. We have a number of guiding questions that we make available for, uh, for each module. Uh, the first question that we have today is, what is manual software testing? This will be pretty easy to, to, to answer, don't you think, Eric? That's right. Uh, then we'll go into the benefits of automated testing. And then finally, we'll talk, uh, we, we want to answer the question, what is black box testing and how does it differ from white box testing? Manual testing is pretty interesting and it's uh, uh, pretty simple. I mean, I, I, you know, my first programming class, my programming in C, um, I think my first, uh, my first project, we did manual testing. I think everybody does manual testing, isn't that right, Eric? That's right. In the manual testing, you're going you're gonna to have the test cases written. You're going to um, write those to the uh, test tasks that have been broken out for you, and those are going to all uh, trace back to, uh, to the test plan. And it may be that the person running the manual tests didn't even write the test cases. This could be someone that you could have someone that wrote the test cases and you've added people to your team that actually execute the test cases. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, automated testing. Uh, so let's, you and I talk a little bit about the differences between manual versus uh, automated testing. I know that uh, they're both complementary. Um, both tests are important to the whole testing process. That's but right. tell me a little bit about the, you know, what uh, automation does compared to uh, manual and where are we seeing some cost benefits? Well the automated tests are going to do take a lot of work up front and they have a big benefit um, when they're being when they're being run later on. So the the big bang for those is when you've got a lot of test cases to run that have like a data component to them. You want to mm. run a lot of, through a lot of data scenarios, or if you've got test cases that need to be run many, many times. So that's your big bang for your buck. So if you've got a component that's going to be around for a long time, and it's also going to need to be tested a lot of times, those are definitely the places you're going to choose to automate. Okay, all right. And when you think about uh, manual testing, like you mentioned once before, it takes a little bit longer, a lot more planning involved in that, um, but it, the setup time is a lot less, right? Right, so the manual test doesn't have the front-loaded effort like the automated test has. Okay. So right. the manual test is going to take the, the manual testers through the stabilization phase. They're going to be doing a lot of their work there instead, instead of in the design phase where a lot of the automated test work is going to take place. Okay. All right, good. Black box testing. Uh, I think of a black box, I think of like, you know, the black box inside of an airplane that kind of by itself, people can't get access to it, but this is a little different. Um, this is testing conducted without the knowledge of the internal workings of the system. So if we think about um, a, uh, a, black box a black box test, the individual wouldn't need to know the, the SQL calls or the scripts that are being used, those types of things. Um, give us some examples of some other black box tests. Right, so if you're testing, uh, like load testing a system, a lot of times you'll write uh, the automation ag against the UI, and uh, if you're testing security, like if you're doing a security assessment, um, there is a certain amount of white box testing that's done, but there's also, there's also uh, quite a bit of black box testing that's done during the security assessment. So this black box test is really about the, um, the end user experience um, right. without having to truly understand the, the, inner, uh, the, the inner workings behind the application. That's right. You don't have to understand the technology used in the solution to do the black box test. Okay. All right. Now we come to white box testing. Now there's glass box, there's clear box, there's open box. I didn't see the lunch box there, but um, 
Um, you know, we have different names of, of really what white box testing is. Um, you know, it's, it, they have to know, you know, you know the, the inner workings of the application yeah. to truly do this type of testing. So give us some examples. Yeah, there. you need to know the technology being used in the application if you're going to do the white box testing. If you're testing the method calls, you have to understand and be able to at least walk through the language and maybe write your test code uh, to exercise those methods. Or if you're testing uh, SQL, the SQL Server components, you really need to understand the Transact SQL and how to how to make those, you know, how to write your SQL code to test the SQL stored procedures, for example. I think it's also important to to, to point out that uh, also if you think about the logic that's uh, that's defined inside the code itself, like loops, uh, conditional statements, and those types of things, also white box testing is very important to testing those pieces out too. Hey, you know, just before we jump to the next slide, you talk a lot about Transact SQL. It, you know, is, is SQL pretty important for, uh, for a tester? So I'm in the uh, IT engineering uh, department, so SQL is very important to every project I'm on. There's a lot of data with, with everything. Uh, we, the applications I work on are generally used by the majority of Microsoft employees, over 100,000 people. That's a lot of data. Every application has a data component to it, so Transact SQL is really important to my job. Hmm. So there is a MVA course that's out there. It's Database Fundamentals and Querying Databases that people should really look at. I think it's important for them to just kind of get up to speed on, on understanding how to access a database and be able to do that type of querying because it's necessary as, as, as you know, they, they think about their test plans. I agree. So now let's answer some of the section questions. First question is, what is manual software testing, Eric? So manual software testing is being a user. So you're looking for bad behavior, you're following a script, and your, uh, your, that script has expected results, and you're logging whether the, the results were the expected result, or you've got something else, and in that case, that's your bug. So it is truly manual software testing. That's right. Um, so what's the benefits of automated testing? The benefits are going to be speed, the accuracy, and then the reusability over time. You're going to be able to to rerun those automated scripts really efficiently, uh, indefinitely. Also some great reporting that comes from Visual Studio and Microsoft Test Manager as you uh, leverage their automated testing uh, modules. That's right, and that's all included out of the box. Yeah, nice. Um, and then the final question is, how is, uh, how is black box testing different from white box testing? So in black box testing, the tester doesn't have to understand or know the technology that's being used in developing the application. And, and white box testing, that's definitely necessary. Okay, great. Thanks, Eric. So now let's move to uh, section 2.2, which is testing levels. In this section, we'll, we'll, we will cover uh, unit testing. We'll also cover component and integration testing. So our guiding questions for this section is, what does it call when a developer tests an individual method? The next question would be, what is integration testing? And then the final question is, what's another name for integration testing? So let's start off with unit tests. Um, unit tests are automated tests that, uh, that verify the functionality of the component, the class, the method, or uh, other property levels. Um, the, the primary goal is to take the smallest piece of testable software um, and isolate it from the remaining code and determine whether or not it uh, 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 behaves as the user expects. Um, when we think about unit tests, when should these be written, Eric? Yes, yeah, so the unit test should be written uh, before the code is developed. And that's generally a developer responsibility. OK, all right. Now let's move to some examples here. So. Um, it, you know, this, this first example that, the, that we're providing here is, is really a very simple example because we talk about 
um, uh, creating a, a mobile app that accepts a person's height and weight and then calculates their body mass index. Um, then it will make recommendations on how to improve your health and fitness. So the BMI calculation uses height in inches, but the user inputs their height in uh, feet plus inches. So this could right. be a potential challenge here. Let's talk a little bit about this unit yeah, test. Yeah, so the unit test is, gonna is going to run through that one method that the developer has written to accept the input that the user's given. And if they have written that method uh, to only accept inches, when the user puts in that feet and inches, that method's going to fail. Pretty simple unit test, I would think. Yeah. Definitely understanding what your user's expectations are and how they uh, input that data is key and very important uh, as a part of that unit testing. So now let's talk about component and integration testing. So, um, you know, individual units are integrated together to form larger components. And when we think about that component testing, that's really what this is about. Integration is more about uh, the dependencies that many of these modules may have uh, or units would have. Um, and that, uh, that integration also needs to be tested. Like, for instance, making database calls to a database, those types of things. Um, Tell us a little bit more about these two and, and maybe provide us some examples. All right, so if you think about the integration testing, what we're talking about is you've got several methods now that are being written. So maybe you've got the one we just talked about where it converts their height into the units that the developer actually wants to put into further calculations, maybe breaks down that feet and inches into inches. You've also got, for BMI, you've got your weight component. So, now you're going to integration test those two together, and you're going to you're going to get the actual BMI pumped out of that, and and that's your integration test. Yep. Okay. So, similar to what you said, here's kind of an example of an integration test. Um, the you know with the BMI example, we assume that we've written a method that converts a person's height in inches, uh, that we've written a separate method that uses the appropriate formula to calculate the BMI. Uh, then we write a third method, and that method receives that user's input, can, does the conversion of the, uh, of the data, uh, and, and results it goes ahead and uh, you're able to uh, calculate the, uh, the inches appropriately. That's right. So let's, uh, let's review the section questions here. Uh, what is it called when a developer tests an individual method? That's a unit test. That's a unit test, okay. And then uh, what is integration testing? That's putting the components together and then testing. Okay. And then finally, what's another name for integration testing? That's component testing. Excellent. Pretty. Now let's move on to section 2.3, testing types. In this module, we'll cover um, a, a number of different testing types that are used. Um, functional, uh, performance, regression, security. Uh, we just got a whole set of, you know, of tests like stress, uh, usability, uh, localization. Um, now, Eric, here's a question I have for you before we move into this. As a, as a uh, uh, software tester, are you familiar with all these types of tests or do you bring in people that are specialized to do these types of tests? Give me, give me, give me some insight in regards to, you know, what, what should a a software tester know when we think about these these testing types? So as you advance, you'll learn more and more about these. There's definitely people I work with that specialize in certain areas. So you may talk to someone who is your accessibility kind of guru, but really out of these all these testing types, I would say pretty much when you get to the advanced stages, you could you could handle any of this testing. Okay, good. Thanks. I appreciate that. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, our guiding questions for this module is uh, what is regression in software development? Uh, what is an example of a situation that might stress a software system? And then finally, what type of testing helps to ensure support of users with disability? So regression testing. Yeah, I think that this is probably some of the basic uh, type of testing that you have, especially as you think about this from a waterfall perspective. Um, but as uh, changes are made to a project, 
uh, you know, there's possible code, existing code that may also be impacted by those changes. So it's important that you go back and you regression test all the code up to the changes that were made inside the project itself. Um, you know, Eric, do you do a lot of regression testing in your, in your current role? We do. Um, enterprise projects, whenever a large data change, or a, sorry, a large code change is made, the, the application really needs to be evaluated for a full regression. And, and in most cases, we go ahead and we do that. Now let's move to stress testing. So I, it's interesting you think about um, you know a single run a single user possibly running an application uh, or a, a database with a handful of records. Um, they may not reveal problems that could occur based upon this being expanded and looking at it from a real world scenario standpoint. So you know there's things like um, you know database performance testing. Uh, really stressing that that database out, you know, maybe they didn't index the database correctly, so we're going to see some performance or some stress test issues there. Um, give us some other examples of of stress testing, and also how does test automation help with um, with stress testing? Well, there there are different components to stress testing, but maybe an example of that is is massing using a like a massive amount of data, and that's going to be really hard to do with a manual test, but uh, really simple to do with an automated test. So these stress tests are also uh, uh, labeled as load tests, correct? Well, there are, there are load tests on top of that, which they can be specific to, if you think about loading up the system with your expected or your peak load even of users. For example, if you have um, uh, open enrollment for benefits, and you know that the last two days of that period, everyone is probably going to do their work at that time. So you really have to plan for that massive influx at that time, and that's your load test when you say, we have 100,000 potential users, and we think half of them are going to hit the site within the last mm -hmm. two or three days. You really need to be prepared for, prepared for that because the last two or three days of your open enrollment period is not the time you want to have uh, an impact to your system. Yeah, okay. good to know. Now let's move on to performance testing. I kind of talked a little bit about performance testing as we think about database and database performances, but also we got to think about the systems themselves as, as, as we think about the given workloads, as you right. kind of mentioned once before. Um, this is you know, definitely closely related to stress testing. It measures lag, it measures responsi responsiveness right. in regards to heavy workloads. Yeah, and in performance testing, you, you actually can do a lot of that with your single user walkthrough because in performance testing, you're not as concerned with the load, you're actually concerned with how your application performs and in your kind of normal scenario. You can add your load tests to that, which you have to do. But if your performance test is poor, if you've got SQL that's not optimized, your load test certainly isn't going to perform. Mm. So your first step is going to be to do your performance tests, understand your, your single user walkthroughs, and then once, that, once all, any of those issues are resolved, then move into your load tests. Okay, great. So now let's talk about security testing. I think this is probably one of the most important tests that we have uh, as a part of the whole testing suite. Um, I know it's very important to many businesses as we think about protecting uh, corporate assets, those types of things. Um, talk a little bit about security testing and some of the work that you guys do from an LCA and also from an HR perspective. Sure, security testing uh, for us is going to be a combination of white box and black box testing. And uh, even in some cases, uh, security assessment will be done by an external, someone external to the project that's not even involved in the project. Okay. Next is usability tests. Um, these evaluate a project by studying how real users actually use the software. Um, give us some examples there, Eric. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, watching the users and understanding how many clicks it takes them to complete a specified action or um, how long it takes them to complete a task. Pretty simple. Next is localization testing. 
Now, this is kind of interesting because you know, Microsoft being a global company, we have to localize our applications. So that being said, we also have to test local versions of those applications. Um, as you think about HR applications and LCA applications, you probably have to localize those for you know, basically just every region that Microsoft has a business in. Tell me a little bit about some of the challenges you have there and, and, and really what, what is this about? That's right. So localization testing, if you think about things like a calendar, you know, it seems pretty simple to us, but a calendar is going to look a little different in each country. For example, in the United States, a normal date range is going to say month, day, year. In another country, uh, it's pretty common to have day, month, year. So if you just have one slash one slash 2004, well, I guess that works for everybody. But if you have <laughs> one seven two thousand four, are you in January? Or are you in July? That's right. So that's that's a common thing you have to make sure and validate and make sure it looks at, uh, for each country. Another thing, you know, we may use a decimal separator uh, in a monetary situation where another country might use a comma. Sure, and also from a from a clock perspective. Daylight savings time. We have daylight savings time in the U.S. where it's not really uh, used around the country. So that's also kind of a, a localization issue that we have to be concerned about. So let's move on to accessibility testing. Now this validates the application's uh, support for users with disabilities. Uh, my father, who's, also, who's disabled, he uses a lot of, of disability features like uh, assistive uh, technology devices. Tell us a little bit about how you do this type of testing uh, internally. Yeah, so these are, these are really interesting and uh, pretty fun challenges to take on. So some of the things we concentrate on are, uh, it's just some examples, are going to be like vision impairments, low vision or blindness. So you have to consider that a blind person, even though they're fully mobile, isn't going to be able to use a mouse. Mouse requires vision. So you have to be able to complete all your actions using a keyboard. You know, someone with a mobility issue is going to have to be able to use voice controls. And, th and these things are all handled through making sure that the code is written properly. And that's things that we have to test against. Okay. So here's our section questions for this module. Um, what is regression in software development, Eric? So that's testing outside of the functional area that was changed. Okay. And then what is an example of a situation that might stress a software system? So a user load or something that's disk intensive, something that's process intensive, processor okay. intensive. All right. And then what type of testing helps to ensure support for users with disability? That's called accessibility testing.